Yo guys, it's me Xenia. Welcome to the new episode of Brit Talks, a podcast about life in Serbia. I know it's been a while uh, since I posted my last video, like about a month ago. Well, I was going through pretty tough mental breakdown and I'm still going through it. I'm gonna manage it now and I just haven't had any strength or any motivation to film, to work, to edit, you know. And now I'm trying to to get my shit together and to live this life. So, it's been a year since I moved to Serbia. Like, wow. In the blink of an eye, it's already a year. What's new, what's good, what's bad? Let's talk about it, shall we? Let's start not from I love Serbia and people are so amazing, oh my god, blah blah blah. I know you've heard that many times and no one gives a damn anymore. But from my negative experience caused not by this country or people or traditions, but by me uh, and my state of mind. I faced, not faced, but discovered a very dark side of mine. And that dark side was fed by temptations that this country can offer. Uh, and I'm mostly talking about Belgrade. And Belgrade is a sin city. Oh my God, I have never ever in my entire life parted that intense, that wild, that desperately like in Belgrade. I couldn't even imagine that this can be possible. This can be done. I thought Moscow never sleeps. No, it's far from that, not even close. And while we were living in Russia, it wasn't a problem to go out on the weekend or to take a break during the week as we had my mother-in-law so we always could ask her to, to to look after daniel and we can go out to have a couple of drinks dance or whatever here we're all alone it's always three of us so there is no chance to go somewhere just me and blood and there's a rarely option to go to build great like spontaneously so we always have to choose which one of us is going to build great to relax and which one He's staying at home with the kid. So you understand the, the pressure, like we always boxed in, limited. And <clears throat> the right words to describe it, it's like you feel like a dog on a chain. And when there's a chance to go out, you just break loose and go breaking bad, literally. You take every single opportunity to drink to do wild stuff, to party till late morning, fuck sleep we only live once. And obviously there are some consequences and they always come and they're always fucking tough. So tough that you can't even handle them. And now you're in a loop, loop of coping with anxiety, fear, panic attacks, responsibilities that you postponed, work, kid, home, life. And the whole process doesn't last too long. It starts on Monday and on Thursday you feel better. You feel you feel new, you feel good. And all that stuff you did last weekend doesn't seem that wild. And all those drinks don't feel that that's a lot. And you are ready to go down again. And here's come another loop, the big one. And you don't notice it at first, but when you go deep into that loop, You just, you just can't find the way out of it. And that's where I am now. Trying to get out of the loop. My life became a mess. My mind became a mess. I just, I wasn't ready to live that intense, that fast. It's a permanent anxiety and tiredness, always feeling annoyed and bothered. It's a third short-term depression that I'm experiencing right now uh, during the whole year in Serbia. And what concerns me about that, it's a question after each party. Was it all worth it? And the bad thing that the answer is always yes. And I'm hella sure that it's not the right one. And after the last party, I think I was, I was ready to say like, it wasn't worth it. But what about friend thing? What's gonna happen with my relations with friends? I mean, if I quit, if I get out of the loop, what's gonna happen? Will I lose my friends because I'm boring or because they will appear annoying uh, for me being sober? The fear of 
loneliness is huge the fear of missing something fun um, the fear of boredom is huge I started going to the gym eating healthy learning Serbian I go to to the language school and learn Serbian with the teacher yeah so I'm trying to be a better version of myself now because there's always a limit like nothing lasts forever and if I want to to, to keep up I need to you know reorganize my priorities the more of that I think uh, the fact that I'm accepting that I have problems is already something it's already you know step forward in order to get over uh, this whole shit I dyed my hair blonde um, <laughs> like three weeks ago as if this could fix something I think it's more of a girl thing you know like in order to change your life you need to dye your hair that's the first step when you want to change your life two weeks later uh, I admitted that it was a mistake <laughs> and look at me now <laughs> I don't know if I'll feel better, uh, duck head, but nothing can be done now. We work with what we got. Uh, the last wild party uh, we had last weekend in Aranjelovac, beautiful place. I have a video about it. I'm still not sure, like, should I upload it public or keep it for Patreon and YouTube memberships? I don't know. It's it's wild, like not wild, but you know. A lot of crazy Russians, drunk as hell, like having fun. Typical. Anyways, mental breakdown is shit. And if you have some stories related to that, uh, maybe of your friends or family members, please share it. I think it might be helpful. So yeah, Serbia and its temptations uh, is not for weak ones. Mm -mm. And please don't tell me that it's not about Serbia, it's about you being weak and addicted, big always find a dirt, blah blah blah. Just don't. Don't waste your time. Okay, summer is over. Finally. It was tough. Anyways, it was the best summer of my life. Even if it destroyed my mental health, still, it was the best summer. Um, the whole year, we were saving money. Uh, from Daniel's uh, social benefits that come from Russia. Um, we were planning to buy a car before winter because bicycle is good when you live in a small town, but it's good only um, in summer or when the weather is dry and warm. So the car is essential here. And we were close, but Daniel will turn three years old this month and I needed to re-register those social benefits uh, so we can uh, keep receiving them till Daniel turns seven. And it turned out that the government, Russian government, uh, changed the law. And according to the new rules, both of the parents should work officially and pay taxes in Russia. Which is actually fair enough. It's just about that uh, we weren't prepared for that and didn't expect that. So. Uh, they declined, they declined my request. And that means we don't have that source of income to continue to save money uh, for a car and for the house. So bye bye car this year, we're not gonna buy it. It's pretty sad. Yeah, bigger. And more of that, <laughs> I didn't become a famous and rich YouTuber this year. It was all my fault because I didn't work enough. I didn't put enough effort. Uh, I was too lazy, too responsible, too dreamy, too busy with parties and drinking. So that's the result. I lost some of my Patreon friends uh, because again, I didn't put enough uh, effort into it. But I'll tell you what, I'll try again tomorrow. I'll try again. I won't give up. I will succeed sooner or later, but I will. This channel is the only thing I've ever enjoyed that much in my life. I'll get back on track. I promise. This podcast is already pretty sad, <laughs> but the bad news doesn't end here. So this month uh we need extend our residence permit shut the fuck up dog please trying to fool 
So yeah, we need to extend our residence permit uh, for the next year. We were hoping to get it for the next three years, but no. And now we have to pay like about uh, 500, 510 dollars for the whole family to extend the papers. Excuse me. And this is gonna happen next year, which is pretty expensive. I told you before, Serbia is not for weak ones. Mm -mm. But we're strong. We'll get through this gracefully. Gracefully. Good news uh, is that from February, start from February, foreigners who have residence permit, uh, they don't need a work permit uh, to apply for a job in Serbia, which means that probably I'm going to try to find something interesting to me, like to wear. Who knows? I'm learning Serbian, bitch. Probably we will switch the language of this channel in future. Who knows? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, so we'll see. <laughs> I'm always getting excited about finding a new job. Like, yeah, it's going to be so fun and interesting, new people, new friends. And it always works for me, but for for a short period of time. Then it gets so boring and annoying. I don't know about job in Serbia yet, but endless Polako in Serbia gives me hope. <laughs> I guess I told you before uh, that people in Serbia work differently, like completely differently. I mean, comparing to Russia. In Russia, those eight hours, people are actually work in order to keep their job and not to get fired. In Serbia, people work to be paid at least something, uh, to make connections at work, uh, to make friends, to hang out, to drink coffee, to gossip. And it's, it's wonderful. So they work somehow. Uh, do not get offended. I mean, I'm being sarcastic. And there's, but there's some truth in my words anyways. I'm not saying it's a bad way to do your job. It's just, just a different way to work. And since most people in Serbia work like that and everyone is happy, they don't see any point of changing anything and that's okay. But you can see the difference if you go to a restaurant run by Russians. You will see the difference. But this subject is for another video. I really want to talk about Russian immigration and what Russian change in this country for good and for bad for the next episode. What else exciting? On 20th of September, I'm going to a bachelor party. Yep. My friend Katja is going to be married. So 19 girls <laughs> all speak Serbian and I'm the only fucking Russian there. I'm so freaking nervous about that. Oh my goodness, you have no idea how I am nervous. And then the wedding itself, even more nervous event. I'm gonna film a video about the wedding without getting too drunk, I hope. But yeah, it'll be my first Serbian wedding. I am nervous, but I am excited at the same time, you know? All that food, dances, traditions, music. That's gonna be interesting. Then goes Daniel's birthday. Uh, speaking about Daniel. He's absolutely fine in the kindergarten. He speaks uh, Serbian mixed with Russian, but he feels comfortable with it. Um, sometimes I don't even understand what language he speaks, like if it's Russian, Serbian or English. But I think time will put everything in the right place, right? So yeah, plans for this autumn. Get my shit together, get back on track, read, film, edit, be strong and striped as a fucking tiger fast and furious and show those motherfuckers that I can do that. And that's pretty much it for today. Don't lose your shit and thank you so much for watching. Bye.